Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog, to my channel and we've got another amplifier circuit here on the table and have a quick peek on it on AliExpress just to start off with um, this is the LJM L12-2 power amplifier ultra low distortion classic amp DIY Okay, and this one says uh, finished with radiator. I'm not sure about that. I went for the two channel kit, and what you get is a couple of these. Let me get rid of that. Um, first of all, I just want to point something out that there are different versions of this, and on this, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it that clearly, but it says version three there. If we go down this actually, we might be able to just have a peek down. I'll show that version 3 again in a moment. We're just going to have a quick look at this. Uh, so what we got is um, plus minus 50 volts. Power equals 120 watts into 8 ohms. 200 watts into 4 ohms at plus minus 50 volts. Okay. The THD um, is 0 0.0005% 1 kilohertz at 10 watts. And this, um, oh yes, uh, this is a, um, I'll have to put that in, 35 volts US. Um, uh, this is 35 volts microsecond. This is the, um, the slew rate. All right, that's for like how fast it can go and it can switch between, uh, you know, when things are noisier and quieter and how fast it can how fast it can move in between it's, it's a whole topic to try and explain i'm not going to get into that just at the moment damping factor less than 200 most are not even going to want to know about any of this sort of stuff frequency response range 15 hertz to 50k uh with a minus 3 db uh, 20 kilohertz 20 hertz 20 kilohertz 0 0.02 db Right, PS and current 80 millivolt milliamps, and you can run it from plus minus 12 volts to plus minus 55 volts. All right, voltage amplification factor is 31 times. Right, so you can read upon all of this anyway, but that's that little bit of information there. So we're gonna just go down this now. I know on a lot of these images they're all generic, and you can see down here where it's got its uh, very low not quite as low as what they're saying it comes in more of a 0 point uh, 0.001 uh, what we're going to see we'll, we'll, we'll see what we get with this and this is what i wanted to show you if you can hear that clodding about that's one of my cats jumping about uh, on here as you can see see these uh, multiple layered ceramic capacitors these are no good no good, no good, no good. They are uh, like microphonic, so they'll pick up vibration sounds and they'll amplify that sound through the system. They're no good. This is version 3 here. And yeah, so that's no good, but I'll show you on the board that I have how that came to me. Now you can see a bit clearer here. See these? You don't want these. You don't want these at all. That's a... Uh, Bipolars here, small bipolars and a film here that I'll show you in a second. And the one thing about this load is the price there. Um, of course, it's a class A B, so it's more efficient than a class A. And um, the price doesn't include the radiator. If you want a radiator for one of these, you're going to have to get something like this, or you can find another one that's going to be the right size and you can drill your your own holes into these are set up for different ones as well so these three here are not for this particular kit but these two on the ends on each end are and the radiator uh the board fills the radiator quite nicely all right so that's that there now let's take a peek at it itself here's the the kit itself um on top of the radiator and this is how you'd set it out probably uh, yourself which is it's simple enough to do as well. It may look like uh, it's complicated, but it's quite nice because the, the leads on these are long enough and hard enough to have this as the, uh, the mount. So it's very, very stiff and solid on there, which is all good. 
And let me show you about these capacitors. So if I just get that, now you see this one here, we've got this film capacitor here, and here's a little bipolar, and here's a little bipolar, rather than the ceramics, because like I say, they're no good. They like as like small microphones and won't do this any good whatsoever. So it's, it's a nice neat board. It looks lovely. I think it looks like quite pretty actually. Um, especially if you know, you take a bit of time when you're doing it and set it all out nicely. And this is using all of the things um, just provided in the kit, which is pretty good. So there's not a great deal to it there. And you know, once you get it and you build it up, uh, it's simple enough, everything's marked out. And I think what we ought to do now is take a peek at the actual setup that we got. So I was hiding this a little bit. Just there, let me put that there. Funny with the light today. But this is how we got this set up. So we got our dummy load there connected to the output and our power. Now again, of course it's a positive negative um, power supply. Means we've got a negative voltage, positive voltage and a virtual ground. I'm using at the moment on this, I'm just gonna kill it like that for now. I am using, um, a 30 volt transformer, 30 volt AC. Uh, so we got uh, two 30 volt outputs. We join the two middle in order to give us a virtual ground, which is going in here. And then we've got our one side, this will be the negative side, the 30 volts, as you can see, with the negative lines on the capacitors there. And this is the positive side, which will be on the other side here. Now, I'm using the same capacitor bank as what I would normally use, and that's all fine. And the only difference here to the setup that is normal is, if I shift that out of the way to get a little bit clearer, is I've had to build this little thing here. Because the power output on this will be higher than what the input on this can take, before this, in fact, clips, distorts, this will because of the input. Okay, so in order for me to get around that, just in this particular instance, what I've done is I've built a little attenuator, which is basically just a voltage divider. And so I've divided the voltage by two. Um, so if I put a uh, 100 volts in, 50 volts comes out. Yeah, 10 volts in, five volts comes out. You know, you know how it works, yeah, like that. Which just means that I'm not gonna damage this and we're gonna get a, a clearer look at the output power on this. Otherwise I won't be able to go up um, as high as what we'd like to. So let's give it a go then. Let's get it on the, um, on the um, audio analyzer and let's take a peek at what's going on. So we've got the audio analyzer suite on the go. Now I'm gonna give it some, some juice. I switched that down. Sorry if that was a bit loud. Um, we're going to go from a range from 10 hertz to 30 kilohertz. Total harmonic uh, distortion and noise. Channel one. Um, we're just going to go for a 200 uh, millivolts RMS input, and we're using eight ohms as our load. And we'll give that a little run. Um, we're actually going to adjust the steps on that. I'm going to get better stepping. Um, and we're going to run that. Now I'd just like to say why this is starting is this is, you get to see numbers here in the frequency. This is the percentage of distortion and the frequency. So I've given it a bit more resolution. I'm in 200 steps on this. It takes quite a bit longer this ends, but you won't really get to see any difference. And this is total harmonic noise and distortion. So we can look over here at the percentage of distortion and we can see here the frequency. We can also see down here on the spectrum analyzer, this is a nice sign. Look at this, this is minus 75 dBr. All right, and we have our first there at minus 76. Uh, here you can see the numbers here, minus 93 
and at the frequency. So here at our two kilohertz, I believe that's going to be, oh sorry, uh, 595 hertz is our first harmonic and that's uh, in at minus 74.2 and that's the highest as well of the harmonics. So that's pretty good all around and the, the second there, uh, minus 81. Um, at these frequencies, sorry. So when we look across here, we can see this is all pretty much below the 0 0.1 until we get to about here, 0 0.96, and we go 0 0.1. But this yeah. is with the noise as well. So let's just filter out the noise and we'll look at the THD. Wow. Now that looks quite nice, doesn't it? So this is 0 0.02. Right, now you can sort of say this is in the hi-fi uh, range now. This is nice, it's a little bit squiggly there, but still, this is very nice. And this is probably the best that I've seen so far myself. Uh, 0 0.01 there, look, uh, 10 kilohertz, and you can use these peaks if you wanted to. and say 0 0.010, and even down here if you wanted to for the, for the, um, for the advertising side of things, you could call that out as a 0 0.006, which is near enough going with the numbers that they've said. Yeah, at that one part. But let's not quibble. That is, that is pretty good. It is pretty good. So let's have a look at the frequency response. I'm going to do the uh, power last, just because it just lets the thing warm up a little bit. So I'm just going to drop these down so we get more of a zero point in the middle of the screen. Uh, the same, uh, we're gonna knock the steps up, 100 steps, and we shall run that. Okay, well, just looking at it, I don't, I'm not sure if there's anything I really need to say. It, it speaks for itself really, doesn't it? If we look at this area as our 20 hertz, 19.9 hertz, up there, and here will be the um, dBr, uh, the dB difference against the reference voltage, uh, and in the dB of power there. So when we look at the, the 20 hertz there, we are 0 0.00 dBr. That's at 20 hertz. Now somebody asked me the other day, why do I bother showing on the square wave 30 kilohertz? Well, for one, selfishly, my speakers here go down to 35 hertz. So looking at 30 hertz for me is, you know, pretty good. And there's going to be other people out there as well. But more specifically, the audio range starts at 20 hertz and finishes at 20 kilohertz, really. Um, less, if you really want to know what you can hear, less than that. Um, but, it, you know, we, we start at 20 hertz. So that's why I show the 30 hertz square wave. It may not be apl applicable to everybody. You've got to understand what you're... Speakers are like, and um, their specifics, specifications. But as we can see here, this is this is glorious. This is you know zero zero. It's just staying at zero. So there's no difference. So we get there zero point zero one. We we'll go up here zero point zero nine. This is going to be the highest peak, round about there, and we're talking zero point one two dB against the reference. So yeah. You're not really going to notice that. It's not really going to be a thing for you. So let's just take a quick peek at that on the square. But that is lovely. That is absolutely lovely. Especially when you consider it's a kit. It's cheap. When you start adding the cost of a transformer and bits and pieces, it gets a bit more expensive. But it's still, um, it's still something that's uh, pretty cheap. So let's just check on the scope. Let's stick on the square wave. Channel 1, of course. Keep everything the same, and we're going to just go straight in for the, the one kilohertz because that's the you know the biggest thing. Let's do a single shot on the scope. Boom, yeah. Mm. And someone could argue, oh, the treble's slightly going up there, but nah, forget it. Just just ignore that. That's okay. Um, there's going to be bits of noise and stuff picked up from in here. Uh, this system so just you know that, that that's all fine that's that does look really nice let's go straight down to uh, 100 hertz do a single hit there again 
um, you could just say that that little tiny bit there is just, you know, so that we gain on the treble. But remember, we saw that in the frequency response anyway. In the, in the, in the higher trebled areas, there, there we go. Slight tiny bit of gain and it's showing up on the scope, which is just this little tiny bit here. But ignore it. There's no, no, no point really looking at that. So let's just switch straight down to 30. That's our one and all. And do a single hit there. Uh, when you see this coming down, this is like the bass drop off, but it's nothing. It is nothing at 30 hertz. So which means that if your speakers can represent it, um, you're going to get that nice bass out of it. Now I was listening to a song by ABBA the other day. I was decorating and I just put anything on, anything that I can have a sing song to while I'm doing the decorating. And there's a bit in that song where it's, it's like in the riff area of the song. I can't remember exactly, but it's got this I'd never heard that before. And I stood up here listening to it thinking, it's not, you know, it's not right in your face, but it's there. And I thought, wow, I'd never heard that before. I didn't realize they've got that thumping, you know, that sort of driving bass coming in. This is ABBA, come on. Anyway, that's the difference. This is can be the difference between how your amplifier and your speaker and uh, can re-represent that music back to you. So, so uh, let's just, for the sake of it, because we start at the bottom of the frequency on 20 hertz, and we're gonna, the AF frequency, and we're gonna just, um, the audio frequency, I should say. Yeah, that, that, that's it. I mean, there's hardly any difference between that and 30 hertz, is there? So uh, that's all good. Now let's go up to, uh, that's five, 5K. Five yeah, five kilohertz. Lovely. I wouldn't be able to tell you, this is that slew rate thing. This is the adjustment, how fast can it go up? Now, I wouldn't be able to tell you whether this is my measuring or whether that's the amp. And to be honest with you, there's not enough there to really complain about. Let's go to 10, 10 kilohertz. Again, you know, uh, not enough. If it was like, you know, all the way off or something, we might have a problem, but no, that's, that's good. Now we're going to go to the top end, which is 20 kilohertz. And look at that. Again, not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. There's a little bit there, but I, I couldn't tell you whether this, whether my, um, my um, vigilant here can actually, you know, register it that quick. Whether the waveform generator can output that quick. Uh, so let's go to 30 kilohertz because that's what my speakers go up to and plenty of your speakers will go up to that. Let's have a look at that there. Lovely. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'm impressed. Um, just because it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, you've got to buy the radiator. Yeah, but considering some of the ones that we've tested, um, I've not really had as good outputs as this. Uh, it, this, this, I've got a I've got to say it is because this does not tell you sound quality. All right. This is just the responses from it as an amplifier, as a circuit, but it's not going to determine sound quality because we've got to remember some, quite a lot of it is pretty subjective. Now we're going to go for the one that a lot of people are going to want to know. Now, remember we've got a 30 volt, zero 30 volt, which means we've got 42.2 volts or something, zero 42.2 volts, something close to that, 42.3 uh, DC. So it gives us about an 80 some volt swing. Yeah, we can just have those two together. So total harmonic noise and distortion. We're going to go for our uh, test frequency in kilohertz, bandwidth 30, kilo, 30 uh, kilohertz, test frequency 1 kilohertz. We're going to stop at 1% distortion. All right, we've got a load impedance of 8 ohms. And we've got a range from 1 watt to 100 watts. So let's hit it. Yeah, I do this um, last just because uh, the, the circuit would have warmed up and it's uh, you know, better not just to stress it out from being cold and trying to push it to its, uh, its limits here. Okay, so there it is. Um, 
Now the reason why we've put this um, using the differential side of this scope and we've put on the um, the voltage divider is because the attenuation ratio down here be a two to one. That's why that's in there is two in case anybody noticed. And as you can see, before we hit that 1%, uh, which will be coming right up on the edge here, in actual fact, it shows us that we've hit 100 watts. It's possible that we might be able to get a little bit more than that, but we have 100 watts. At, um, I just pushed that right to the edge. 99.082 watts at 0.068% of distortion. All right, so I didn't quite get up to the one watt. Now I could probably do that again and set it up to a thousand watts here. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think that's doing, uh, you know, it, it's doing what it's supposed to there. And I don't know how warm this is here. Yeah, that's pretty warm. So. Um, we're just going to leave that like that and we're going to say, right, well, there we go. This is our output from it. Now, it says it can go up to minus 55, which that means you can't use, you could use a 35 volt output transformer. Yeah, two lots of 35 volt AC. And that will get you, um, you know, 50, 50 volts, something like that. But if you go up to 40 volts, trying to get your 55, it's actually going to go to like 56 and a half. And I don't know, you know, I don't see the point in putting the maximum voltage in because that means you're running at full pressure and you're probably kind of to, to the components and everything else. And the reality, do, I, do you actually need that at full pressure? No, that's why I've settled, I settled for um, 30 volts, zero 30 volts, because it would give me that 40, 42 volts output and I can also use that on other amplifiers that say they can go up to like 45 volts which is great so yeah there you go so I know there's some guys out there that will be happy with that because you're going to get your 100 watts and this is at 8 ohms all right now we could set up and go for a 4 ohm load and see what we can do there but this time we're going to run it on 4 ohms and see how that goes all right this is one to one thousand watts please nothing break i'm just hoping it's cool enough yeah that should be all right let's give it a go okay guys so there we can see um all the way across this is quite nice again the crossover point is basically the same as the the last time uh well nearly twice the voltage uh, watts as last time but as we can see this is where we hit the 100 watts so there's 99.1 there's 100 watts 0.064 percent and as we get into the realms of let's say 150 watts 0.05 percent and as we do our crossover to one percent distortion we're on a Let's just put that right on the peak there, 179.29 watts. And if we just take this from the 0.1% on the crossover there, we're at 172.284 watts at 0.109% distortion. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> That's pretty, and what you've got to remember as well, I need to bring the camera over now. Sorry about my chair making some noise. I will invest. I will invest in a new one soon to try and cut that out. But just what I want to add to this as well is, I'm using this is um, 30 volts, five amps, zero, 30 volts, five amps. This uh, is 300 VA. This, and I I have uh, uh, well, my ideal setup would be to have two of these, one for each channel to ensure that when it needs it, it has that grunt. It's not gonna need it all the time, but when it really does need that grunt, it can pull it from the transformer without pulling the voltage down. You pull the voltage down, you're not gonna get the output. And I think we can see on the screen that that does work quite well. So uh, that would be a monoblock setup, for the transformer, the capacitor bank, and the uh, amplifier itself as a monoblock. Two of those left and right channels. Ideally, I'm sharing the capacitors and the amplifiers at the moment between the one. 
It looks very nice, but I prefer to have two of these. So when I can find another one of these exactly the same uh, for a good price, I'll probably buy another one. This is the one that I'm going to have for my uh, home hi-fi listening. It's very enjoyable and uh, and, it, and the output show that it does fall into the grade of what would be called high fidelity. It may not be the best on the planet, but look at what it is you're buying. And look at how this isn't screened or anything like that. Um, but fortunately, it's got a differential input, which means it gets rid of lots of noise and stuff automatically. All right. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys very shortly in the next one.